1938, a new engine rolled out that would forever change railroading, the EMD 567. It replaced steam, powered America's trains for nearly three decades, and seemed unstoppable. Yet despite its dominance, this groundbreaking machine vanished from production. The very innovation that made it revolutionary would also seal its fate once railroads demanded more power and cleaner engines. The EMD 567 diesel engine wasn't just another power plant. It was a complete paradigm shift from the smoke-belching, coal-hungry steam locomotives that had dominated rails since the 1800s. Little did anyone know, this revolutionary machine carried within its design the very seeds of its own destruction. But what made this engine so special? Let's dive into the technical marvel that was the 567. This was a V-type two-stroke diesel engine that came in multiple configurations, V6, V8, V12, and V16, all arranged at a precise 45-degree angle. Each cylinder displaced exactly 567 cubic inches, hence the name, giving the V16 variant a massive total displacement of 9,072 cubic inches. The power output was revolutionary for its time. The V6 produced 600 horsepower, the V8 cranked out 800, the V12 delivered 1,200, and the mighty V16 pushed an impressive 1,600 horsepower at just 800 RPM. Compare that to steam locomotives of the era, which required constant feeding, watering, and maintenance just to keep moving. A steam locomotive needed a crew of three to four people, required hours of preparation before each journey, and consumed massive amounts of water and coal. But the 567, one engineer, flip a switch, and you were ready to roll. The 567's design was pure engineering genius. It featured a uniflow design with four poppet-type exhaust valves in each cylinder, controlled by an overhead camshaft per bank. The compression ratio sat at 16 to 1, optimizing power while maintaining reliability. The bore measured 8.5 inches with a 10-inch stroke, creating a power plant that could run for thousands of hours with minimal intervention. But here's where EMD really showed their innovation, maintainability. Unlike steam engines that required specialized facilities and entire teams of mechanics, the 567 was designed so that power assemblies, the head, liner, piston, and connecting rod could be replaced independently in the field. Railroad mechanics could perform most service operations using conventional tools. No more roundhouses, no more armies of specialized craftsmen. A couple of guys with wrenches could keep these machines running across the continent. The engine block was constructed from welded steel, making repairs straightforward. Parts were interchangeable across variants, meaning a component from a V8 could often work in a V12 or V16. This standardization was revolutionary in an industry where every steam locomotive was practically a custom-built, one-off creation. EMD had essentially created the first truly mass-producible locomotive power plant. Throughout the 1940s and early 1950s, the EMD 567 became the heartbeat of American railroading. It powered the iconic F units that hauled passenger trains like the California Zephyr, with its Vista Dome cars crossing the Rocky Mountains, and the legendary Super Chief that raced across the Southwest Desert. It drove the streamlined E-units that became the face of luxury travel, their stainless steel bodies gleaming as they pulled passengers between major cities at unprecedented speeds. And then there were the workhorses, the GP series Jeeps that revolutionized freight operations. These locomotives could pull massive freight over mountain grades that would have required multiple steam locomotives and helper engines. The 567 was proving that diesel power wasn't just cleaner and more efficient, it was fundamentally superior in almost every measurable way. The 567 evolved through multiple variants, 567A, 567B, 
567C, 567D, and 567E, each addressing previous limitations and improving performance. The 567C variant, for instance, delivered 7.5% more power than its predecessors and introduced better cooling solutions to overcome the overheating issues that had plagued earlier models. Engineers were constantly refining the design, fixing problems, and pushing the boundaries of what this engine could do. Railroad companies were convinced. The reliability, fuel efficiency compared to steam, and dramatically reduced labor requirements made diesel locomotives an obvious choice. A steam locomotive required a fireman to shovel coal, an engineer to operate it, and often a conductor. Maintenance crews needed to clean fireboxes, replace boiler tubes, and perform daily inspections. And the 567 powered diesels? One engineer could operate multiple units, maintenance could be scheduled rather than emergency driven, and fuel efficiency was dramatically better. The EMD 567 didn't just participate in the dieselization of American railroads, it led the charge, single-handedly making steam locomotives obsolete almost overnight in railroad terms. But here's where our story takes its first dark turn. For all its incredible success, the EMD 567 harbored a secret that would eventually bite back. What if I told you that the very design feature that made it so revolutionary in 1938 would become its death sentence in the 1960s? You see, the 567's two-stroke design was brilliant for its time. Two-stroke engines fire on every revolution of the crankshaft, compared to four-stroke engines that fire every other revolution. This meant more power strokes per minute, more power density, and simpler construction. But this design choice would later prove to be the engine's fatal flaw when the world changed around it. Early piston designs in the 567 suffered from ring sticking and catastrophic heat-related failures. Cylinder port scuffing had become a recurring nightmare for railroad crews. Ring breakage could sideline entire trains for days, stranding freight and passengers in remote locations. EMD engineers worked frantically to solve these problems. They developed a heat dam approach, relieving cylinder ports to manage the intense thermal stress these engines generated. They created an innovative two-piece piston system that vastly improved durability, especially under the wartime production pressures when quality control was challenging. But these were band-aid solutions to a fundamental architectural problem that would only get worse as performance demands increased. Here's something that will blow your mind about this engine's hidden double life. The EMD 567 didn't just power American railroads during World War II, it became one of the most critical weapons in the Allied arsenal, and most people have never heard this story. When America entered World War II, the Navy desperately needed reliable power plants for landing craft, patrol boats, and support vessels. Steam engines were too complex and vulnerable for combat conditions, and existing marine diesels were proving unreliable under the stress of warfare. So the Navy turned to an unlikely source, railroad engines. EMD 567 engines were adapted and installed in thousands of naval vessels. LSTs, landing ship tanks that carried troops and equipment to beaches at Normandy, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa were powered by modified 567 engines. PT boats that patrolled dangerous waters relied on 567 power. Without these railroad engines, the Allied island hopping campaign in the Pacific might have been impossible. And the irony? While the 567 was helping win the war overseas, it was also revolutionizing transportation at home, completely replacing steam power on American railroads. This engine was literally changing the world on two fronts simultaneously. But success breeds complacency, and by the late 1950s and early 1960s, the railroad industry was evolving faster than the 567 could adapt. Trains were getting longer, consisting of 40 or 50 cars that were now stretching to 100 or more. 
They were getting heavier. Intermodal container shipping was revolutionizing freight transportation, and they needed to go faster as passenger services were competing with airlines and automobiles for speed and convenience. The EMD 567, for all its innovations, was hitting its fundamental limits. The V16 turbocharged variants could push 1,750 to 2,500 horsepower, but this was achieved by forcing the engine beyond its original design parameters. Cooling systems were struggling, maintenance intervals were shortening, and reliability was actually declining as railroads demanded more power. Meanwhile, competitors weren't sitting idle. General Electric, traditionally an electrical equipment manufacturer, was developing their own line of diesel locomotives with more powerful engines. Alco, the old steam locomotive manufacturer, was fighting for survival with increasingly sophisticated diesel designs. The writing was on the wall. The 567's architecture was becoming obsolete. Cooling remained the 567's most persistent demon. Despite multiple engineering solutions across the various model iterations, overheating, coolant leaks, and thermal stress continued to plague operations. The 567C had resolved many issues with improved cooling passages and better heat management, but it couldn't solve the fundamental problem. The engine was being asked to do things it was never designed to do. Then came the 1960s, and with it, a completely new challenge that would prove to be the 567's final undoing. Environmental awareness was growing rapidly across America. The same public that had celebrated the elimination of coal smoke and steam locomotive pollution was now asking harder questions about diesel emissions. The EMD 567's two-stroke design, while robust and reliable, was fundamentally incompatible with emerging emissions control requirements. Two-stroke engines, by their very nature, have incomplete combustion cycles compared to four-stroke designs. They burn oil along with fuel, produce higher particulate emissions, and are much harder to fit with pollution control equipment. Fuel efficiency, while revolutionary compared to steam, was no longer competitive with newer four-stroke designs and improved two-stroke architectures being developed by competitors. The railroad industry needed engines that could meet stricter emission standards while delivering more power, something the aging 567 architecture simply couldn't provide without fundamental redesign. But why couldn't they just upgrade the 567 instead of starting over? This is because, by the mid-1960s, the fundamental limitations of the 567's design had become insurmountable. The bore was permanently fixed at 8.5 inches, the stroke locked at 10 inches, and the displacement per cylinder set at exactly 567 cubic inches. These weren't just numbers, they were the physical constraints of thousands of existing locomotives and the entire manufacturing infrastructure EMD had built around this engine. To meet the power demands of modern railroading, EMD needed more displacement per cylinder, higher RPMS, and completely redesigned cooling and emission systems. But changing any of these fundamental parameters meant starting from scratch. The tooling, the manufacturing processes, the parts inventory, the service training, everything would have to be rebuilt. EMD's management faced a classic innovator's dilemma. They could continue incremental improvements to the 567, knowing it would eventually be surpassed by competitors, or they could cannibalize their own successful product with something completely new. The decision would determine not just the fate of the 567, but potentially the future of EMD itself. In 1965, EMD made the announcement that would seal the 567's fate and shock the railroad industry. They introduced the EMD 645, not an evolution of the 567, but a completely new engine designed from the ground up for the modern railroad era. The numbers were staggering. 
The 645 featured a larger bore of 9.06 inches while maintaining the 10-inch stroke, resulting in 645 cubic inches of displacement per cylinder, a 14% increase in displacement that translated to dramatically more power potential. The new engine could achieve higher RPMs, up to 950, compared to the 567's maximum of 800. V16 versions of the 645 could produce over 3,000 horsepower, nearly double what the best 567 variants could manage. More importantly, the 645 was designed from the ground up to meet future emissions requirements and efficiency standards. It featured improved combustion chambers, better fuel injection systems, and cooling architecture that could handle much higher power outputs without the thermal stress problems that had plagued the 567. The message to the railroad industry was clear. The future had arrived, and it didn't include the EMD 567. The EMD 567 wasn't actually banned by any government agency, environmental regulator, or safety authority. It wasn't outlawed, prohibited, or legally restricted in any way. Railroad companies didn't stop buying 567 powered locomotives because they were illegal. They stopped because better alternatives existed. When the EMD 645 could pull longer trains, climb steeper grades, run more efficiently, and meet stricter environmental standards, continuing to buy 567 powered locomotives became economically irrational. It would be like choosing a horse and buggy when automobiles were available, reliable, and cheaper to operate. EMD didn't stop producing the 567 because of government pressure. They stopped because their own customers were demanding the superior performance of the 645th. By 1966, orders for new 567 powered locomotives had essentially evaporated. The market had spoken with the only vote that matters in capitalism, the purchase order. The ban was self-imposed by an industry that had outgrown its most successful power plant. It was a ban enforced not by regulators or bureaucrats, but by railroad executives who needed to move more freight, faster, more efficiently, and cleaner than the 567 could deliver. In a sense, the EMD 567 was a victim of its own success. It had so thoroughly revolutionized railroading, proven the superiority of diesel power, and established the expectations for locomotive performance that it created the very market demands that would eventually obsolete it. Despite its discontinuation, the EMD 567's impact on railroading cannot be overstated. It powered the complete transformation of American railroads from steam to diesel, hauled millions of passengers and billions of tons of freight, and established EMD as the dominant locomotive manufacturer for decades. In its 28-year production run, it fundamentally changed not just railroading, but the entire American economy. Many 567-powered locomotives survive today, more than 50 years after production ended. Museums across the country preserve these mechanical marvels, and some short-line railroads still operate them for light freight duties. Specialized companies continue to manufacture replacement parts, and there's still a thriving community of mechanics and engineers who understand these engines intimately. The engine that killed steam locomotives was itself killed by the next generation of diesel technology. It's a reminder that in engineering, as in nature, Adaptation is survival, and those who cannot evolve are eventually replaced by those who can, no matter how successful they once were. The EMD 567 story is both triumph and tragedy, a machine that changed everything but couldn't change with the times. In our world of electric vehicles and AI, what current technologies might follow the same path? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into engine history, subscribe for more stories about the machines that built our world.